We're doing a show. Please be quiet. Late Night Lately theme song in three, two. And welcome back to Late Night Lately. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the Late Night Podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. I'm turning myself down, and I'm turning the monologue up. Guess who didn't write a monologue today? Let's see if I can if I can go ahead and uh, squeak one out for you. Uh, I did have, I wrote, you know, I didn't write down the monologue, but I did write down five topics for jokes. Uh, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's, let's see if I got something down. If I can't get it down in two minutes, then oops, then I'll just, then I'll just move right on. And who, and everybody loves it when I do these, when I do this so much. Tucker Carlson visited Russia. This is two weeks. <laughs> this is two weeks ago. Tucker Carlson visited Russia, where it was rumored that he might have the first interview with Putin in a couple of years, and uh, he's getting that brown nose ready. He's uh, dipping it. In, thank goodness it was just, it was just Valentine's Day because he dipped it in chocolate and he's ready to shove it up Putin's butt. You know, the interview already happened. Okay. A federal court says Trump doesn't have presidential immunity uh, when it comes to uh, if he's going to be able to uh, be charged. And, uh, you know, also he doesn't have any more uh, $350 million because today it was decided that he has to pay that and he can't run his business for three years. Very true. It's not a joke. It's just a statement. Uh, Tiger Woods returned to the PGA Tour with the Genesis Invitational, where he shanked on the 18th hole on the first day. Uh, and you know what also he shanked? Is uh, his relationship with his first wife. I shouldn't have said that. That was very mean. I feel very bad. Um, the uh, the cast for, I don't know who wrote this down, the cast for the uh, new Fantastic Four movie was just announced and includes uh, Internet Zaddy, uh, but Pedro Pascal and uh, if you're just as mad at that cast as I am for uh, saying the word zaddy uh, then you know you're, we're in the same league uh, not, don't be mad at that cast it's a good cast and finally Greece legalizes same sex marriage uh, unfortunately it is to uh, only Mediterranean um, diets that mix I don't know I lost it that was a monologue. Let's move on. I got a lot of videos to talk about. That's mainly why I didn't have a chance to write monologue jokes. I see. The thing is, I record this on Fridays now, and uh, whereas I used to also record constitutionals on Fridays, but now that comes that comes out on Thursdays and I record on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. Constitutionals is the Entertainment Business Podcast, the original podcast, two hundred and eighty episodes. Big deal. Should be more, but I stopped for a little bit. I was depressed. <laughs> Still am, um, but it was hard to uh, uh, to to I, either I had to get the videos together or I got to get the monologue together, and I made the choice. <laughs> but this is a better impromptu monologue than what usually happens. Um, okay, Colbert did a live-ish episode of his show. At the uh, after the Super Bowl, which was I, I, I was unexpected for me. Usually, when when the Super Bowl happens or whatever broadcast network, one of the big four, uh, it is. Uh, side note: <laughs> This is a side note. <laughs> Yesterday, the uh, the boss of the CW, the new boss of CW, said we want to be a big five network, and I just went, you, no, it can't happen. I'm so sorry, <laughs> because CW just canceled all of their basically all their shows except for All American. They gave one last season to Superman and Lois. Uh, they just, I just don't think there's, they have live golf. I don't think there's, they have the caliber to become a big five because they mostly run reruns. Anyway, back to late night. Colbert did a post game, uh, super monologue, uh, is what they called it. And I, it was again, unexpected. So anyway, uh, these broadcast networks, they typically run, uh, their new episodes of whatever show, that they want to promote. So this season it was once one year was on Fox. It was um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. They did Super Bowl episode of that. When he was on NBC, it was Stress Relief, the one of the funniest episodes of The Office ever. And this year it was Tracker, as well as 
they threw in Stephen Colbert's Late Show and, and uh, at, after midnight, and uh, they were I they were fantastic. I enjoy, especially the after midnight. I just can't believe that they even uh, did that for that show. Uh, and I hope the ratings are good. I mean it. Uh, even though after midnight still has a lot of speed bumps to get over. Yeah, a couple. And his monologue was good. Uh, and then John Stewart was I don't I mean I he wasn't really interviewed, but he he did hang out there so. Uh, John Stewart pop, popped back up, and uh, that was a nice surprise uh, for people. Uh, and then after midnight, Wayne Brady, we'll get to John Stewart in a second. Wayne Brady was on uh, after midnight alongside um, uh, Kevin Smith and Maria Bamford, and it was a football themed episode. And they commented on, I again, I say live ish for Colbert and for um, uh, after midnight because. They were essentially live or live to tape. I guess they all shot during Tracker and they did jokes. Um, and, and that's amazing. And I loved it for for it. So uh, that was that was good. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to get my ducks in a row here. Um, Rob Hubel popped back up and, uh, uh, and he was wearing a tuxedo shirt, which is a hint at tuxedo guys, which is amazing. I can't believe tuxedo guys is a bit, a long running bit. I think it was him, Paul Shear, and, um, uh, maybe like one or two other comedians who were, uh, uh, on at midnight and they just did a joke about they're doing, they're shooting a show called tuxedo guys and they're wearing tuxedos. It was fantastic. Anyway, I love that he popped back up and that's for fans of that show. There's one thing I want to mention about After Midnight. The audience is too rowdy. It's way too rowdy. Even the stuff during the week. It's way too rowdy and it's pissing me off. I don't want to hear this hooting and hollering. It's still a late night show. I don't care if we're interacting with the audience at some points, if Taylor is. We need to calm that down because that was the that was my least favorite part about uh, uh, At Midnight. Was when Chris would say one thing and then people would go wild for it. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's that. And uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So John Stewart returned for his first monologue back, uh, at the daily show. And, uh, I gotta tell you, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, but we, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too deep into this, but it's, it's still John Stewart and that, and it's an older version of John Stewart and it's, and it's for, it's him for better or for worse. You know, you can say like, hey, I miss Jon Stewart, but um, it's it's still it's still him. It's still him. And he's still going to say the same things uh, over and over again and kind of get down in the whisper. And it's unfunny and uh, and say why and say like wild, like not inaccurate, but like wildly wild statements that just kind of don't make sense. But he's a funny guy. And I'm so glad that his monologue was long, 20 minutes. And he was able to tell these jokes about Biden and Trump and and really just kind of bring everybody together on those points. Oh my gosh. But it was good. Uh, okay. We'll talk more about him in a second. And then Jordan Klepper uh, uh, hosted the rest of the week, which is what they'll be doing. And uh, 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 and it was and he was good. And people... Uh, I try not to read online disc discourse <laughs> and it was, it was interesting. Uh, you know, it, he, 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 he should have his own show and I was, it sucks that the opposition did not last. I'm sorry. I was typing something out. So that's why I'm a little bit distracted. Um, but it, it's good that he's, he's been able to, the daily show has been able to afford him as well as his coworkers, the ability to host their own essentially their own shows for a little bit. Uh, I still think Dulce Sloan has been shortchanged when it comes to hosting The Daily Show. She did not finish out her week before the strike hit, and the strikes hit, and uh, and she still hasn't gotten that chance to really shine. But Klepper hosted, and... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm looking at a John Stewart video, and he and he had uh, great guests along uh, along with him. He had uh, Killer Mike, who I think in this interview talked about he he and his wife are looking for a third, <laughs> and he jokingly was like, I think he jokingly said that, but he was like uh, Taylor Swift. That was pretty funny. Uh, and what else happened on the Daily Show? I just want to go over some other things that happened on the Daily Show. They were posting 
John Stewart clips all week long. Okay, let me let me just let me just finish these videos. Recommend the videos. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton duetted on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Kimmel had a uh, pretty good week, and uh, the Tonight Show had JB Smoove on. And JB Smoove is like truly just one of my favorite people. He's such a funny guy. I love him so much, and uh, he's just he's so funny. Uh, as as it, I don't want to do this too much and too often, but in terms of guests for the week, I think Kimmel had a really good set. Of guests, he had Fortune Femister and Femster and uh, America Ferrera, who popped up in uh, a an Oscars Land video, like kind of like a Barbie ish video for uh, Kimmel a, a couple of days, a day or so before her interview, and it had Kate McKinnon, and Ryan Gosling, and it was kind of like a promotion for him hosting the Oscars, which was really good. Uh, Kimmel also really excels in. Um, his uh his monologues. I don't like the man on the street stuff that they do, where it's like I think this week on Valentine's Day they had, can you guess your your partner's hand in this hole? Can you figure it out if it's them or not? Uh, and I, I I don't really like that stuff, and I don't like when he talks about The Bachelor, but he does, he does a really good job at commanding the audience when he's out there in statehood uh, talking. <laughs> uh, Fallon kind of had a quiet week. Uh, he had the likes of Amy Schumer, J.B. Smoove, and uh, uh, Tyler Perry. But the games, you know, I don't know if the games are doing well for this show anymore. They don't they they don't get as many uh, views as I think that they'd want. And but I, I think I think views for late night on YouTube in general are down. You know, I besides uh, Colbert's monologues, besides Kimmel's monologues, besides. Uh, um, uh, Seth, Seth's uh, uh, closer look segments. Nothing really gets viewers. And then you know there's John Stewart's um, Watchmen, Jigger, his thing. After Midnight had, I think, bef- before I get to John Stewart, I think After Midnight had the best week it's ever had. The su- I mean, not, not, not like the Super Bowl was just a huge step for them, at least in my eyes. And then. Uh, uh, on Valentine's Day, they had amazing, like just a, a very good set of people. In fact, they were all couples of different orientations. You know, they had a, they had a, uh, uh, including Britannic. If you know them, they're from. I know them from YouTube, but they are a comedy, a comedy duo. Uh, who who started, who did YouTube stuff years and years and years ago, and they were very funny guys. And it was surprising to turn on the episode. <laughs> on Thursday and see those two guys go Britannic. Oh my God. Uh, they also had, uh, uh, like I said earlier, Maria Bram Bamford and went with rain Brady, Wayne Brady and, uh, 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 Kevin Smith. I'll say Josh Smith. I know, I know a guy with <laughs> school with name, Josh Smith, uh, Ricky Lindholm and, uh, 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 Lauren Lapkus and Ashley Nicole Black. I mean, it's just a, a, a who's who of comedy people. Seth had on Beanie Feldstein and uh, let's see who uh, I I never get her name right, but she's a fantastic actress. Geraldine uh, Vicious Winathan. There we go. Jake Tapper, Chelsea Peretti. Tapper, you know, uh, Seth is a lot like uh, uh, when when what's his name when Colbert started out. He was doing, you know, he would interview famous people alongside Ted Cruz and the creator of Bumble. And things of that nature, and Seth really excels in that in that same fashion, talking to business people and news people because he's able to make that conversation funny in ways that Colbert really isn't. Uh, <laughs> no offense to Colbert, but he's also he's also very knowledgeable about stuff when he talks to Chris Hayes or Katie Turr or Jake Tapper. All right, let's talk about John Stewart. This was the uh, return that I think. People would have expected. Um, John Stewart is uh, again, for better or worse, it was it was more John. It was more or less him, John Stewart, doing his his whole business thing. And he's he's a very funny guy, but sometimes uh, a lot and a lot like these other hosts, you can just say something that just doesn't make sense or doesn't work, and or go off on tangents. And for him, it's it's he kind of gets in a he kind of gets in a way that. He will just say something that is a statement and he'll need you to take it as such. He'll need you to take, you know, something that he says as a statement and it's true and uh, you can disagree with him if you want, but he will say that he's right over and over again. Um, 
and with that, you know, he said some things about uh, Biden alongside Trump, but he said things about Biden that were just true and 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 really worked and it really made sense. And if 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 he doesn't, I'll say this: and this is this is so stupid, but I this is where we are as a, as a as a society and people who take in and watch and and read and listen to to anybody who's in front of a microphone or anybody that that you like or enjoy and and we often have these parasocial relationships with the people who were listening or watching or reading and nothing can get past them uh gail <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry i'm getting choked up gail king i was watching something and she was talking oh god who was she talking to it was on CBS Mornings, so I will go to their YouTube channel. But she was talking to the person about uh, – uh, uh, there was, it was a political interview. And and she said – she was I forgot who she was talking I'm, I'm I'm, about. Right now I'm trying to multitask. I'm scrolling and, and running through uh, who she's talking – but uh, whoever she was ta- whomever she was talking to, she asked the question, do you think Jon Stewart has – any sway over the election, what he says, because they did interview Jon Stewart on CBS mornings and holy cow, this must be their most, their highest viewed video. Cause right, there's a video where they are talking. They're at C- CBS mornings is at the super bowl and it's 11,000 views. And then this view, this video has a million, but she, but she asked, does he have any sway over um, who, who people choose to vote for in the election. And I think that the, that that is a very true thing. Um, and it is, uh, it is, it, he, he does, he does for, for better or worse, he does have, um, kind of that, that push, you know, in the same way that when Hillary was running and I think the weekend before the, uh, the election, the FBI was it the FBI or no James Comey James Comey came out and said um uh release that information about not her emails but he's it, he released some information uh, about Hillary and uh people I think you know the the ones who were easily persuaded who who didn't like the Ken Bones of the world who still were undecided were like I'm going to vote for Trump or not vote at all or vote third party or vote green party or whatever and in this in this case, there's still a lot of people who listen to to John Stewart and everything he has to say, and they're they're right up the middle. And he will have some type of tick, nothing big. I'm not going to say like he can choose, like he's going to say he's going to say everybody needs to vote for Biden or everybody needs uh, to vote third party because uh, X Y Z, and then that's going to take away 13 percent of Biden's Biden's votes. And uh, allow for Trump to win. That I don't think that's going to happen. But he does. The, whatever he does say, will have some type of momentum for the candidate. In the same, not in the same way that Taylor Swift can say, "I want. Uh, uh, we need a, abortion access for uh, for women, and you should vote for the candidate that votes that that uh, supports abortion." And because that would move, that would move needles. That truly would move needles. Same thing with Ariana Grande, Beyonce, like that moves needles. I don't know if Nicki Minaj's Barbies have that type of pool. But Jon Stewart being on, on Monday, even once a week, being on is going to help or hinder the, uh, the election in some way, in some fashion. And he was good, and he was good, and that's what I want to get a, get across is even even there's there's parts about him I, I do not like at all, but he was he was so good at uh, really running that stage and, and everything. This comes from Deadline, written by Peter White. John Stewart reveals why he wanted to return to the Daily Show, and he he said as much on his CBS Mornings interview, um, but he joked, "Who better to com- uh, comment on this election than someone who truly understands two aging men past their prime." <laughs> On, uh, so in his CBS Mornings interview, Stewart said he hopes to have a catharsis and a way to comment on things and a way to express them that hopefully people will enjoy. And I mean, that sounds like the most vanilla, middle of the road answer, but he's right. He, I think, you know, without the problem with Jon Stewart, 
Uh, that's that was kind of a godsend that cancellation that Apple a revealing that 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 since he was going to comment on uh, things that are happening in China and them canceling it, uh, them getting over creative differences and them canceling it, that opened him up to be somewhere where it's going to be a lot easier and a, and basically a little bit more creative freedom to comment and talk about things like China, just because you you would th- you would think you would suggest that. Being on Apple, being on a streaming service will give you a lot more freedom. But in some in some ways, The Daily Show, his his home ground is a lot more uh, freedom than than the four or five episodes that the problem with Jon Stewart would have afforded him uh, for 45 minutes or so. But as far as influence, he says, just about everything I wanted to happen over the 16 years that I was at The Daily Show did, did not happen if you were hoping for influence. And, and again, but I, I still think we're in, we're in a different time now. People are listening. 16 years, 16 years is a long time without the internet, like without the internet we have today where everything's so fast and people are easily influenced. He says uh, he comments on Jen Flans, who's been there for a very long time, uh, and uh, and she's and she's and she d- runs that show pretty well. Now this one comes from Variety, written by Salome Hailu. The show John Stewart popping up on the Daily Show was a huge boost for the company, for the company, for the uh, for the show. I call TV shows company. <laughs> TV shows are companies, no big deal. He brought in 1.9 million viewers. Oh, I've been saying all week 1.23. It was 1. Point, no, 1. Point, yeah, 1.23. Uh, so he brought in 1.9 million viewers, the biggest episode since 2018. 930,000 tuned in via Comedy Central, while the rest were in simulcasts on CMT, Logo, MTV, MTV2, Paramount Network, Pop, and TV Land. I'll tell you this. The next morning after I was uh, – so on Tuesday morning, I watched The Daily Show. Uh, I – the the version that recorded on YouTube TV for me was uh, MTV because I saw the MTV studios and I went, why am I why am I watching MTV right now? I don't even know if I have it visible. Oh, I do, I do, I do have it visible on my thing. Not MTV two though. I should. <laughs> it shows that the Daily Show has been. There, there's a there's a lot of things that this this brings to light. The Daily Show has been lacking a host. Roy Wood Jr. was on the assignment, I think. What is that? What it's called? Audie Cornish's show. Uh, let me triple check because this is going to bother me. Yes, the assignment. If you're watching the video, you'll you'll see the assignment uh, on my phone and uh, where he talked to uh, where where uh, Audie Cornish talked to Roy Wood Jr. about the Daily Show and the future of comedy, and uh, he. Roy Wood Jr. just point blank said it was like, "Hey, Hassan had this had the show up and it was ready to go," and and then that whole BS happened with that uh, hit piece, uh, and it was a hit piece, and 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 then the show kind of went into a limbo. Even during the strikes, the show was in a limbo where they couldn't figure out what to do with the hosting, and now they've landed on the schedule of Stewart on Mondays and then the the correspondence during the week. Could you imagine if they were still doing celebrity guest hosts during, during the this year? Oh my God, this show would be in such flux. Have uh, no offense to those people, but you know I don't want to have Leslie Jones hosting on October fifteenth uh, when the elections in a month in less than a month. I'm like, all right, guys, let's let's get something going. Uh, similarly, uh, they canceled the uh, uh, the nightly show. The, a year before a big election and look where we landed then <laughs> as if that show had any sway or viewers <laughs> I was one of them uh, I did a lot of issues with that show I did have a lot of issues with that show so John Stewart he did a good job he did well and he really he really brought back I say this this familiar feeling I tagged in that uh, if you if you click on click through the URLs that I tag in this podcast uh, he brought back familiar feelings for this show and it works it works it works it works and I and I enjoyed seeing him um, but I don't I, what I want what I don't want to happen is for us to get lost in what this what this guy says all the time I think it'd be best if we also focus on the correspondence and what they bring to the table. 
when there's a video where they and they obviously couldn't include everybody, but during that first episode, uh, Stewart what basically had uh, was talking to the the best effing news team, and uh, it's which which includes Ronnie, Desi, Jordan. Uh, Dulce and Michael, but it didn't include the two newest people who were brought on board before the strikes happened, um, whose names I can't seem to remember right now. But they were, but they were there this week. Well, one of them was the uh, the the male, the guy who they hired was there. Um, you know, let me let me find out. <laughs> let me find out these people because now I now I now I feel bad uh, for not getting getting their names right uh, or there at all. Louis Black is still there, I think. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, who are the current Daily Show correspondents? Troy Iwata and Grace uh, Kollenschmidt. So they both they both were are were there. They were hired in October, or they started in October. It's in, and it's also very interesting to see on Paramount Plus and on this YouTube channel that they've. They're they're advertising the Daily Show, but they're calling it the Daily Show Mondays with John Stewart. The Daily Show on the bottom Mondays with John Stewart. The Mondays have to do well. Oh, Grace was there last night. Okay, so I didn't watch last night's episode. Uh, the mo- the the Mondays have to do well in order for this show to continue essentially. Because if this doesn't do well, I don't know what's going to happen. And Paramount's, you know, chopping heads left and right. But John Stewart's back, and we we're gonna be we're gonna be with him all year long. Let's let's hope that this new set of writers, um, and 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 the and also uh, he takes what he learns from his his past set of writers at the uh, the problem with John Stewart, who were young and queer and diverse. Uh, the only reason I know that is because a they showed them on uh, the the behind the scenes stuff periodically, and b I also <laughs> sent in a packet for that show. It's very true. I sent in a packet. Uh, I would be out of a job right now. I'd be in Newark without a job, but I'd be so happy. I'd be like, yeah, I was on a I was writing on a TV show. Uh, and but let's see, let's see, let's hope that he takes stuff that he that he learned from them, and then he also. Uh, is learning from from his new set of writers who worked with Trevor and who worked with these guest hosts because he still has some things to learn in this in this new world of daily slash weekly late night shows you can you can st- he can say yes I ho- I did this for sixteen years but it's now different if if Letterman came back he would have to learn how to do stuff for online and he's kind of is he's on his on that Letterman YouTube page uh which I wish the Conan page was more like uh they're uploading the clips of the of the old shows as well as new stuff with him commenting on Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey or commenting on the Apple Vision Pro whatever it is and it's still he's still a funny guy and I would and I would and and, and so Stewart kind of needs to take a page out of Letterman's book when it comes to all that and even Colbert has been great in this transition with he he's done the old school now he's in the new school and he's and he's and he's ha- has had a fantastic job uh Fallon was Fallon was kind of in the middle there and he's and he's he's done this hard turn just like Corden into TikTok and Instagram and stuff and it's and it's work it's it's paid off and Kimmel Kimmel is the same way Kimmel I think um is kind of timeless in his way where he can fit in with his online crowd but also uh you know it's it's the, his long monologues and um, uh, uh, the, his bits with the outdoor people, even though I don't like it that much, are still very good. But hey, we're done. Conan, if you're listening, I know you're not. Please separate your podcast stuff from the late night stuff. I don't watch that podcast stuff. Thank you. Listen, if you like what you heard here, head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where you can see me talk to your favorite people in the entertainment industry. I just spoke with, I just, I just put out the interviews I had with the cast of Resident Alien. It's a fan, it's a great show. They're, they're a fantastic set of people, 
and uh, it was so loose and so fun. Uh, my, the, one of the few junkets where I, I didn't feel the pressure for time. It was it was great. It was fantastic. I loved it. So you can watch that video on cpluscomedy.com as well as youtube.com slash cpluscomedy where you can also see a video version of this show uh, alongside video versions of the other podcast that you can subscribe to, the Constitutionals Podcast, which is the Entertainment Business News Podcast, and the LinkedIn Logs, which is the Job Podcast, where I try to get a job. You can follow us on social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at C Plus Gavity, me, at Chad Black White, on all of those Rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends, and we're doing the best we can. Here we go, baby.